So guys, I am back with another Cyberpunk 2077 video and today guys, I bring you the complete rundown of Patch Notes 2.1 not long released by CDPR. Now, Update 2.1 arrives tomorrow, today being Monday, it arrives tomorrow the 5th of uh, December. Same day we get the GTA 6 trailer too. Today is going to be a big day people. But it's update for Cyberpunk. If you don't know about it. I'm pretty sure you probably do. But if you don't. It's absolutely massive. It adds in many many new features. So we're going to get into all the patch notes. Right now. How's it going guys? My name is DPJ. And if you do enjoy the video. Leaving a like really helps. Out. And if you like what you see. And want to see more. Be sure to subscribe. Also guys. I apologise about my voice. I've still got a cold. It's still kicking my ass. But we've just got to carry on. You know what I mean. Okay so. Getting straight into it. Next date. Update 2.1 for Cyberpunk 2077 and Phantom Liberty on PC, PS5 and the Xbox Series X and X is coming out uh, tomorrow, December 5th, around 12pm CET. The update brings our usual bug fixes, changes and gameplay improvements. It also adds some of the most requested features such as the NCAR Metro, Radio Port, Repeatable Car Races, Hangouts with Romantic Interests, Cats and mm, Cats? Wow! In preparation for the update released tomorrow, check out the list of changes below. Okay, so new features. V's issue with their Encart City Pass is resolved, and they can now travel between 19 metro stations located throughout Night City on five different lines via fast travel or riding the train itself while gazing out the window and watching the world go by. Yes, indeed, I can't wait for this, people. V will now be able to invite their love interest to spend some time together in any of the apartments. Okay, hangouts are a repeatable, unlimited event that become available once romance path with a given character has concluded. That's pretty cool, guys. I cannot wait for this. I mean, I've only really done River and actually, no, I haven't. I've done all three. Actually, no, I haven't. I've done all four. I've done Pan Am Judy. Oh, but well, I've done them on PC. Uh, a couple of them on PC, I'm only playing on Xbox at the minute, so that can be a little bit crazy, but we've got panel people, that's all we need, as you know. Okay, so, you can now listen to the radio while on foot, or while riding the NCART train, using the new radio port feature, available while you explore. It switches seamlessly to car radio whenever you get in a vehicle, and turns off when quest-specific music starts playing. It's also possible to adjust the volume directly in the radio window. That's pretty cool too. Added replayable car races we can take part in after finishing the Beast in Me. This is Claire's questline by the way guys, if you don't know. Look for the race flag icons on the map and win the races to get eddies and a discount for the Auto Fixer website. Additionally, we improve the racers AI to make them more competitive and made enhancements so that the whole experience is much more fun. Pretty cool. Sightseeing binoculars in various scenic spots have been added as another way to appreciate night cities of vistas. That's pretty cool too, that's something new we didn't know about. Okay, so accessibility. I mean, I actually covered this in a video the other day, which I'll link down below, guys. It's actually pretty cool. There's a new accessibility settings tab, and there's many, many, many adjustments uh, to said things you can do in the game. Okay, so we're going to move on to quests and open world. We can now be pursued by gangs after taking an aggressive approach towards them during certain gigs and main quests. This sounds incredible. Gangs now, guys. Remember the choices you made during certain missions and gigs and if you see them uh, throughout your playthrough even way after you progress said mission or gig and this said gang sees you there's a good chance that they will chase you down pretty badass in my opinion gigs that involve stealing and delivering a vehicle can now turn into a car chase and a combat sequence badass Decorative vendors spawn inside some chaos are now functional. Please note that food stands are not impacted by this change. It is now possible to sit at various bars in Night City and interact with the vendors. Badass. Fix an issue where some gigs wouldn't trigger after approaching the quest area. Chipping in, fix an issue where Rogue would follow V around permanently. <laughs> Cybercycle sighting house on the hill. Fixed an issue where Peter Green's body was still highlighted after scanning. Every grain of sand. Fixed an issue where the reward vehicle for completing all Badlands gigs did not spawn. Gas, gas, gas. Fixed an issue where the reward vehicle for completing 
Oh, City Centre gigs did not spawn. Gig, Olive Branch fixed an issue where it was not possible to talk to Sergio Kosinski because he did not spawn. Killing in the name fixed an issue where it was not possible to progress past the goal to the signal source objective because the conversation with Johnny did not trigger. Okay, so live during wartime, a fixing issue where Pan Am would not get on a motorcycle when required to follow her to the gas station. Weird one. Space Odyssey, fixed an issue where the quest did not activate even after updating the game to patch 2.01. The Prophet Song, fixed an issue where the quest could uh, reappear as undiscovered on the map. Okay, so here we have Phantom Liberty specific guys, and these are a few more fixes as well. So if you want to pause the video and read through these, be my absolute guest. Nothing major here I've experienced, probably the high hole silver lining one, uh, but other than that guys, I haven't really seen many uh, problems when people have been complaining about these. So hey, but again, if you want to read through the, or pause the video and read through these, you can, because some of you guys may be affected by them. Okay, so now onto gameplay. Improve the boss fights with Yasha Ivanov, Boris Bekarov, and Adam Smasher. Smasher will now be able to activate his hand of and wicked. I mean, yes, we have seen this. Uh, well, if you haven't seen it, you didn't watch the red stream. I mean, it looks pretty cool. I know I've made him a little bit more difficult as well, but he looks like a completely different fight to me. So I cannot wait to actually experience him again. I've actually got a playthrough. Uh, well, I've actually set, made a save for the Adam Smasher boss fight, which I may just reload. I may just make a completely new, fresh character and run through the game again because some of these changes are being crazy and, well, maybe worth that run. Okay, so added new cyberware, Fiend X and Kajito Lattice. Uh, this is really interesting, actually. I didn't know they were adding new things. Pretty cool. Rebalance stats of multiple cyberware. Decrease cyberware capacity cost for memory boost, uh, by conductor, Karen Zikoff, uh, boost system, Ra Ra Avis, reflex tuner, Defensikov, uh, cellular adapter, handle wrap, the Axolotti, the micro generator, the peripheral inverse, the Leroy ligament system, and the Camilo Ram manager. Balance changes for some of the perks. Spontaneous obliteration change uh, a minus 50% recoil to a plus 12.5% crit chance for level 1. Die 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 changed a minus 15 a recoil to a plus 12.5 crit chance for level 1. Added a bonus where weapon handling improves as stamina decreases for level 2. Pretty cool. Sharpshooter added a stamina cost bonus on top of the existing stamina regenerate a bonus for level 3. Shoot to chill, minus 7 stamina cost replaced by a plus 4 armor penetration. So some pretty decent changes there, I'm not going to lie. Made balanced tweaks to some of the weapons. Crafted weapons can now have up to 2 mod slots. Please note that this change won't affect weapons crafted prior to this patch. Increased the rate at which mods drop from enemies, added a chance for weapon mods to appear in containers that previously offered only crafting components. Increased the availability of mods in weapon vendors stock. Packs mod will always be available. It will now be possible to properly install tech weapon mods instead of power weapon mods on the Ha 4 grit. Tier 4 and Tier 5 weapon mods can now be found in weapon vendors uh, in their stock if the player's tier is high enough. Increase the max ammo limit you can carry in your inventory for all ammo types, that's pretty cool. Crafted iconic weapons will now be properly displayed when put in the stash. This is something I wanted for so long. I mean, I've had all the weapons, all these iconic weapons, and not appearing on my wall absolutely do my head in i'm glad i hope this actually fixes that cyberware capacity shard should now drop properly for players who have reached their maximum level fixing the issue where some tier 5 plus weapons and cyberware were upgraded to a tier 5 plus again or to a lower tier it will now be possible to activate overclock while controlling cameras karenzikov will now work with throwable weapons Fixing the issue where the V for Vendetta uh, achievement would unlock despite not meeting the requirements. Please note that this fix will not reset an already unlocked achievement. 
fix an issue where the player didn't receive the quick and the dead achievement despite meeting the requirements, reduce the minimum stick tilt at angle required to stay in sprint when playing on a controller. Secondary stats in Cyberware change via the Chipware Connoisseur perk will no longer have their values randomized after saving or loading, sorry. After reaching level 60 in the Netrunner skill, the overclock ability will now properly reveal the enemies within 10 meters and allow you to hack them through cover. Adjusted the Synapse Burnout Quick Hack, decreased the max damage bonus from a plus 400 to a plus 300. For tier threes to five, decrease the max damage bonus from a plus 600 to a plus 400 percent, and lowered the bonus per ram unit from 12 percent to a 10 percent for the iconic variant. They also state here the made player movement more smoother and more responsive. Which, if you do read this, pause it, be my guest, and read through these. And now we're going to talk about vehicles and traffic. You see this on the screen now, guys. Again. If you want to pause the video and read through these, be my guest. Okay, so they added five new bikes to purchase from the Autofixer website. I actually thought this would be the case. Adding their new car, the Porsche 911 Cabriolet. Visit the Autofixer website for more details. Added an option to mark vehicles as favorite in a cool vehicle menu, pretty cool. Added an option to throw knives and axes while riding bikes. Improve the melee animations while driving bikes in third person perspective. Attacking an NPC driver will now cause their vehicle to swerve. Pretty cool. Now we're on to sound, guys. Again, if you want to pause the video and do these, you can. And then we have visual, and then we have UI, guys. And then, guys, if you play on PC, after this, we have PC specific, then console specific, and then MISC. Again, I've read through these already. There's nothing major here in regards to changes that should be impact people as a whole. Most of these have been fixed in previous patches. But again, if there's something specific you're looking for, again, pause the video, read through these, and hopefully there's a fix for you there. But there we have it, guys. Update 2.1, the patch notes. I mean, hey, I cannot wait for this. Only one more day, 24 hours, and we're there. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really helps out. Tell me your thoughts down below on the latest patch. And hopefully, guys, I will see you on that next one.